Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm finally going to be lowering the F80. I'm actually going to be starting it up, just getting it ready. So whenever I get home from work tomorrow, I can start working on this. It's something that I've been wanting to do. I've had these things for, I want to say about a month now. They've just been sitting here in the garage and I just haven't really found the time to do it or the will to actually do this. So the method that I'm going to be using are lowering springs. I know the most common thing to do with these cars are going with the KW um, height, adjust height adjustable springs. And obviously if you want to take it up a notch, a good notch, then uh, you would have to go with the V3s. Something that I would like to get in the future, but right now it just didn't really make sense for me. Like I'm just gonna be driving it here and there around town, take it to maybe some local events. Um, and then obviously as time goes on, I'm just gonna get the feel on how much driving I do, what kind of driving I'm gonna be doing with this car. The reason why I went with the lowering springs is because for one, it's cheaper. And also the drop that these uh, give you it's pretty aggressive compared to a lot of the springs out there. You guys know that I'm used to driving low, lower cars, so if you have issues with your car being too low, or if you don't feel comfortable driving, or your skills aren't that great driving low cars, these are probably not your best bet. There are other springs that do sit higher, um, but it will eliminate some of the, uh, the wheel gap a little bit. So I went with the most aggressive ones that I could find, but not, not only because of that, the thing with these springs is that they're made to work exactly like the factory springs do. So most of the springs that you guys buy that are aftermarket are actually progressive spring rates, which means that every time that your car compresses, the spring rates actually change. And I feel like that actually impacts the life of the strut a lot more than what these would. So these keep the same spring rate all th uh, throughout like every compression of the car. So these are gonna give you more of a factory feel from what I've seen on video and from what I've read on the forum. So if you guys wanna go with something aggressive, if you guys are wanna keep it like affordable and then just kinda of consider different suspension down the road, maybe you don't wanna know if you wanna go air, or if you wanna go with like something expensive, uh, when it, like for coilovers or air, uh, what is it, uh, air struts. A lot of people that I've seen, like they stick to the springs for a good while or until the whole ownership of their vehicle. And I can't say that I'm not gonna do that. I might, if the drop is where I want it to be, if it rides great, then there's no need for me to change it. I do have the adaptive suspension, so I am able to keep that feature. And also I'm able to eliminate the, uh, the wheel gap. So let's take a look at what's in the box here. Here we got the rear springs. One front. Get an air freshener. And we got the other two springs in there. So these are actually what they call them, I think the spring, it's like a hockey puck. So it's a spacer because if you tend to put the springs on like this, the car is actually gonna tuck quite a bit in the back, especially if you're running 20s, I've seen them and they, I mean, to me it's too much tuck in the back without these. And what these are gonna allow you to do is to keep the, the car balanced in the front and in the back. So this is one of the things that I like the most about these springs is because when you buy lowering springs for any car, usually the front is higher than the back. And um, so you'll end up having, let's say like a two finger wheel gap in the front, one finger wheel gap in the back. So with these, actually it's, it's gonna drop it a little bit still, but the thing is it's not gonna drop it way too much uh, because if anything, the front is what needs the most drop. And that's what you're gonna get with the uh, lowering springs in the front. These are just kind of to balance out the, the height. So it'll keep it level, uh, the same amount from the front tire and the back tire. And, I, and once, I get, once I get done with the install, I'll show you guys everything. Um, this is not gonna be a DIY. I'm just giving, filling you guys in for anybody that's interested in looking at a different method and don't have the money or do not want to spend 
you know, like $2,500 to $2,800 if you have the adaptive suspension. Um, this way you get to keep the feature um, and then, you know, it should ride, ride great. I'll give you guys a review once I get them installed. Uh, the other reason why I just didn't feel like installing them right away was because I wanted to drive the car for a little bit and give you guys an idea and opinion on how the car felt. That way so I could kind of get a feel of it, how it feels now and then how it would feel uh, or how it feels once I install the springs. Alright guys, so here we have the EMD springs and the factory. As you can tell, there's a little bit of a length difference. I want to say maybe one coil. But I'm actually going to be using these spacers that the springs come with. So this spacer, so it sits on top of this right here. In between the chassis and the, uh, the metal uh, little cup here. So what this does is that in order to prevent your car from having too much sag in the back. Some people like it, some people don't. I personally don't really like having too much tuck in the back compared to the front. Um, I'm going to be using these spacers. I put one in already on the other side. So let me go ahead and show you how it looks. Alright guys, so this is the little spacer that I was talking about. So it sits between the chassis and the metal cup that where the spring sits in. So I almost forgot that I had these. So I'm going to be using a 15 millimeter spacer in the rear and I have a 12 for the front so these were the same setup that I was using on my F30 for the uh, stock wheels so um, 15 in the back 12 in the front obviously I've seen people run 15 and 15 also I've seen um, 20 and 20 which I think is a little bit too much uh, 15 and 12 should be the perfect amount of fitment and still be able to keep everything functional without rubbing so I'm picking up the video a couple days later after um, we did the install. Um, I did the rears and then I had Miguel come by and over and uh, give me a quick hand on the front ones. Honestly, it was one of the most simple uh, installs that I've ever done spring-wise. And I didn't really record it, but just to give you guys an idea on the method of doing it, I, I never took the shock out of the uh, assembly, out of the, uh, the control arm. All I did was loosen up a few bolts undo the uh, end link and um, release the top hat bolt and we just dropped it down and it came out so aside from the process I didn't record it because I was like eh, nobody's really gonna want to watch a um, time lapse of me doing a suspension install when you guys have seen probably <coughs> oh plenty of those I almost choked on my own spit <clears throat> so to give you guys my impressions on this car, on the ride so far, obviously I'm going to have to do a follow up video because it's kind of hard to tell right, right away. But even just now putting the springs on and then taking it for a drive, if I put it in sport on the highway it does happen to feel just a, tear, a, a tad uh, stiffer than what it did before. But it's nothing dramatic. It's nothing where you're, where you're, where you feel like you're going down the highway, but uh, bouncing up and down. So I decided to switch it in uh, comfort mode, which is something that I hardly ever do. I think the only times that I switch it to comfort is if I'm, I think the one time that I was driving down about like an hour, hour and a half. And aside from that, I always keep it in sport mode. When I start the car, it becomes, it starts in sport. Steering stays in sport, so it can, I mean, I like keeping the steering wheel stiff. So, yes, the car is going to get a little bit stiffer. I've seen some people complain about the ride quality. And honestly, this is just fine to me. You guys do know that I had the F30 with BC coilovers. And some people complain about that. Obviously, like, some people are more sensitive. I mean, I like being in a stiff car. Um, obviously, not too stiff. But I just feel like it feels sportier and maybe easier to handle whenever it's on the slightly stiffer side. So... Um, no complaints here with the uh, suspension. I will be continuing the video once I get off work. I am actually, I'm, all, I'm about to pull in. So I just want to give you guys my first impression before I kind of forget. So yeah, I'll pick this video up in uh, just a little bit. Um, the car feels almost the same 
I really don't see any issue with these springs. So if you guys are wanting to get a noticeable drop, these springs are the way to go. Obviously this car was stiff from the beginning. It's a sports car. It's not a uh, Cadillac, it's not a Mercedes. This car is meant to be stiff. So it's going to be a little bit on the stiffer side, but I highly recommend these springs for the price. You really can't go wrong. And like I was saying, the spring rate is a uh, linear spring rate. So I think it'll, it'll be a little bit easier on the shocks itself versus the uh, progressive spring rates that a lot of the co other companies use. So big thumbs up to these springs for the price and the drop that you get. I'm pretty happy with the result. Honestly, it's probably the same height that I would have gone with if I would have gotten the uh, KW uh, height adjustable springs. Just because I don't want to go too low and then tear off my lip uh, once I get it mounted and everything. So I want the car to be functional, but I also want it to look good. So I think these hit the spot. Uh, so highly recommend them. I'll have them linked down below if you guys are interested in getting a set for your car. These can be for the F80 and the F82. So if you order the ones made for the F80, they come with like a little spacer. So make sure that you order them. And uh, if you're buying them off somebody, then make sure that they're for your car. Because when you order them for the F82, they don't come with the little uh, spacers. Just because the body line of the F80 sits a little bit lower than the F82s. So the F82s don't require that to get the, the equal balance from like say tire and the fender. And the F80s, they do require it. <clears throat> Obviously, well, they don't require it, but it's optional. I chose to run them, and I'll show you guys, uh, once I get home, I'll show you guys how the car looks. I'm pretty happy with the results. It's even in the front and in the back. If you choose not to run the spacer, then uh, it'll be lower in the back than what the front is. So uh, let's head home, and then I'll show you guys how the car looks. All right guys, so here she is. As you can see, it looks way better. Let me zoom in right there for you guys. The back, you can't really tell much of a difference, but the front is where the uh, magic happens. Obviously, it used to have a bigger wheel gap right there. Now it looks much better. So overall, the gap is about the same up front, and then the back, it's about maybe like a quarter of an inch gap. I'm really happy with the results. Uh, the ride of the car is almost about the same like I was telling you guys. Almost the same as factory. Highly recommend these. Obviously if you're on a budget, I highly recommend them like that. <laughs> but obviously if you have um, a bigger, you know, a bigger budget then you guys have more options. But the reason why I went with springs is because honestly I want to do my uh, crank up at some point. And I just figured if I'm going to spend like $2,500 on suspension, I might as well just put that towards the crank cup first and then later on down the line move over to a different kind of uh, suspension. So it could either be uh, like some KWs or uh, maybe air. I don't know. Just a suggestion. Uh, just options. Give you guys a quick little walk around this way. Here's from this view. You guys can tell the uh, diffuser is missing. I ended up having to take it off. I mean, here's a shot from the rear with the spacers. And from the look of it, I think I could do 20 in the back. So if you guys can see that. I think I could fit a 20, and I think I'm going to move the 15s to the front and then do a 20 in the back eventually. Because I'm, I'm going to be keeping these wheels for a while. So I'm just gonna, I'm trying to get the best fitment that I can out of them. And then once I decide on what wheels I want, then, you know, I'll move from there. I'm not too sure if I want to do 19s or 20s yet, but I'm definitely going to be keeping these. I'm not going to sell them. So, uh, yeah, I think this looks pretty good. It looks better than what it did before. Even with these spacers, I don't mind it at all. Really happy with it. 